Hello, everybody. It's Sergeant Carla Burr with the Emerald Police Department podcast, and I've got with me my co-host is back. I'm so back. excited. <laughs> me, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I did miss you <laughs> last time, uh, Corporal Jeb Hilton, but uh, Shane and I did have fun I bet, on I our bet. own, though. Yeah, that's nice. Nice to be back. Um, good to be doing these again. So yeah. He was on like a month. It felt like a month long vacation. It in felt Mexico. like three days to me. Yeah. So <laughs> it wasn't wasn't quite that long. It was it was a good three week vacation. It was nice. I'm it's ha- awesome. happy to be back for the most part and get back after it. Yeah, awesome. You want to introduce our guest? Uh, today we've got Lieutenant Warren Gross with us. Um, I, I knew him as the cheetah whenever I first started, and I was like, I don't, I don't even know what that means. I don't know where that came from, but that's what everybody calls him. So that's, and even when I call him on the phone, that's what he says. Yeah. You got the cheetah. So <laughs> I, I was like, well, that, he's the cheetah. So I, that's all I knew for the longest time, and then I finally figured out at the time he was Sergeant Gross, and and, and that's where I met him was was through that stuff. So we've got him here with us today. He's actually over our violent crimes unit. Um, he has been several things in the past. We'll let him him introduce himself and kind of go over some of those things that he's done since he's been here. All right. Uh, I hired on here in 1988. Uh, I was in the Fighting 57th Academy. Uh, it's funny how we all call him the fighting whatever it is. Mine was yeah. the fighting 66. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think mine was the, the, the quitting 76. <laughs> so pretty much. My, my academy was the first academy with the uniform we wear now. Oh, cool. Until that, before that, it was it was the old French blues. Okay. And my academy was the last academy to be issued a revolver. Oh, wow. So, uh, so, so you shot with a revolver for a yes, while. Yes. How long wow. did you carry that? A um, couple years. It, it, you know, when you're new, you're the new guy. Yeah. It takes a while for you to get into those classes and schools to transition, so. Um, after the academy, I spent, I think it was seven and a half years on the evening shift, uh, most of it north and east. Uh, after that, I spent eight and a half years on the day shift, all of it uh, north. Uh, uh, the Lord smiled on his servant, allowed me to promote. And in uh, the end of 06 and through 07, I was in uh, white collar crime, financial crimes. And after that, I went to Knights, and when I was on Knights, at first I had the, uh, the west side of town, and then we, we transitioned over to the 10-hour shifts, and when we did that, then I was the supervisor over the west and the east side of town. Um, and it was right at the end of 2009, December, like the last week of December, uh, uh, they made a sergeant spot in uh, traffic follow-up, or then they changed the traffic investigation squad, and uh, I started taking, I took over that, that job and I did it for, gosh, 10 and a half years. I was going to say a long time. A long time. Yeah. And a uh, great job. Had a lot of fun, a lot of good, good guys to work with. And uh, the Lord smiled on his servant again. <laughs> and I promoted in a, a May of, a, the end of May of 2020. And since then I've been in charge of violent crime, uh, the violent crime unit and is last week week before last now i'm also over domestic violence oh, okay it's I, a heck of a career yeah i i worked with cheetah uh as a patrolman on the north side and the the thing that always that i always think about is we worked back there so long ago that there wasn't the bridge over the yes boulevard really to yes. get out the to tracks. east ridge you had to go up to 24th oh, wow. or down to third um or and around I forty, yeah, all the way yeah. to Lakeside, and, and uh, all the way back around. It always happened on a hmm. weekend. He'd be calling for backup, and there'd be a train, and we would have to take <laughs> the long way around. But we, I mean, we knew he would hold. He would be okay till we got there. there but still, everybody's it's in so custody. Scary. And... <laughs> so they actually built it while we were all north yes. and really? put it on there. Yeah, they yes. put that one and then the one that no that one was already there i was thinking the one on grand but that one was already there yeah grand was yeah there. i didn't realize it was that new yeah it's, yeah hmm. that was the late 90s really mm-hmm. nice. yeah it was crazy because i was like how do we have this whole section of town that we can't get to um yeah. Yeah. and one my, officer out there by himself yeah. more than once my backup was potter or dps yeah you know because yeah. they'd, yeah. to, uh, they'd be already be out that side yeah yes. yeah it was crazy crazy times i just remember when i started 
I was on evenings north, and just you'd work DUI squad yes. all the time. Like yes. it seemed like every time I would I would be work, and I'd hear 181, 181. I'm like, who the heck is 181? <laughs> it's and, the cheetah. And it was. It was uh, and every every time. Always, always out there on Boulevard East, making stops and making good arrests. Yeah, yeah, I did a, did a lot of that uh, DUI squad, and so, which you know, is a lot of drunks sometimes, and got it. And it's, be hemmed up. it's a huge problem here in Amarillo. It's something we're still dealing with, and yeah. and something that I mean, honestly, as as an officer, to, to be completely honest, it's a it's a hard thing to work. It's a lot of work for a, sometimes a little bit of glory out of that. Yes, there, there's yes. a, usually a, a lot of people that don't get a whole lot of a sentence out of that, or if anything, and it's a lot of work that goes into making those cases. And so a lot of people don't like working those as much as some of those that do. Thankfully, so. yes, yes, yeah, it was it's unfortunately way too much here in town um so talking about the violent crime squad yes, kind of do you want to tell our our I, i'm sure people know what domestic violence is but tell our listeners so, um, a little uh, bit about it violent crime you know we we don't do domestic violence but we do everything else so robberies and ag assaults and shootings and stabbings and beatings and um, people threatening each other and and all those kind of so uh, we stay pretty busy and so those, my guys work hard and they try hard to get after and stay on top of their cases and, and uh, uh, try to make good cases for the prosecutors uh, so uh, we uh, we get called out literally we get called out as much or more than we did when I was in traffic mm -hmm. and so those guys are, are hustling trying to talk to victims, talk to our suspects, get our witnesses or whatever we have, whatever the case is, and uh, working to uh, put, put bad guys in jail, at least get a case on them. Yeah. And, well, and a bunch of good ones are coming out of all oh, that. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I, I mean, it, it's something where we, I think people see that in the news, and and we're seeing more, it seems like. I, I think, you know, over the last year, we, we, we swore here that our numbers were way up. And the numbers came out, and they weren't. And, and it, I think it's just because we're we're honestly being more transparent about those things happening. We're putting it out. The social media's making it go round, and, and and we're seeing a lot more of that. And not that there's not more than we want happening, but it's not as much as what people think when they they think oh, Amarillo is turning into Chicago and things. Yes. Yeah. I think it's just that that social media and the media that's putting a lot more of that out there that we're seeing it more. Yeah. And we're busy, and we 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 work a fair number of shootings but it's not anything remotely close like yeah. some of the bigger towns well and and i mean this the numbers show that that some of those things went up during covid i mean people were stuck together stuck in feelings get hurt things emo you know a lot of things changed covid has changed a lot but it wasn't just amarillo either like it, that was a nationwide trend yeah, that, that every everywhere. city is experiencing yes. so y yes it's concerning to us for what happens in amarillo but on the on like a scale when people say we're turning into this we're not we're not turning into something other than everybody's experiencing this and we have to figure out what the formula is to help with it here in our community yeah totally so you know when it comes to gun crime and and it's just really a lot most of the stuff we work the guys do a lot of the traditional detective investigating things you know talking to witnesses looking for any evidence we can find looking for any video or anything that, that of the area that, that would show that and they're doing some newer stuff also or we're, we're, we're I don't want to get new trade secrets out but things that we're working on and some of it is with social media mm -hmm. and some of it's with some of the uh, uh, other other parts of those people's lives that we're trying to, to get all the evidence so we can give the prosecutor the best chance of making a case you know and, and if we have a uh, we have what's called a non-fatal shoot review and so we meet with all the all the chiefs all the captains and a couple lieutenants and we'll go over the case and uh, it, are we thinking there's going to be some retaliation out of this or we think there's going to be further problems down the line with with whatever parties are involved and uh, a lot of times there is and so we'll, we'll get the other other squads and other you know whether it be the uniform guys or the special operations people or the MPOs the neighborhood police officers helping us out to uh, uh, find our suspects find witnesses 
and uh, do whatever we can to put an end to that problem. And prevent further yes, potential yes. issues from that same original incident. Yeah, that's, you know, we, we've been getting a lot of questions lately. Again, you know, the fact is that our shootings have gone up, and so people are like, you know, and, and especially like the one with the 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 guy that um, shot into the vehicle and shot the, the little boy. Yes. And then um, there's a couple more, and, and people are like, well, what's going on on those? And, and what we want people to understand, and that's another reason why we brought you in here, is why sometimes we don't give out all those details um, right away, it, you know. Yeah. Sometimes we're, we're kind of playing our cards close to the chest, so to mm-hmm. speak. We... We're wanting to make our case, and we're wanting to get whatever evidence we can uh, to make that case. And sometimes the people, if we put something out there, and the social media will go crazy with it, and now maybe somebody hears something, and, and it's kind of influencing maybe what what they really saw or what you know. And so, a lot of times we just won't put anything out there until we make an arrest mm-hmm. on the case. There's some privacy laws and stuff like that sure. that we've got to follow. But uh, like with the, the ten-year-old boy with that mess, it was kind of a road rage thing that went went sideways, went crazy. And uh, but they, you know, the uniform guys got out there, a detective got out there, uh, CSI was out there, and, and we got everything we need pretty quick. You know, so that that was in that case that went pretty 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 fast there's a few things on it we want to tie up and finish mm-hmm. up but uh, it went went pretty good mm-hmm. for the most part and another question that we get sometimes is people will say well why don't you maybe put out a description of something like we put the robbery out yesterday and we put um that it was a female but we didn't put like her clothing or and sometimes we won't put that out and um you know we'll tell people part of it is because again like you said we don't want to influence people Um, maybe the person didn't see it exactly go ahead I can tell you have it we did put stuff out like that when I was in traffic a lot Mm -hmm. with a say a hit and run fatality or something so we might put out maybe a white vehicle or maybe an SUV and just keep it pretty generic pretty Mm -hmm. vanilla and uh, then then see what happens what comes in when we have those crime stopper tips or people are calling in because we'll have an idea of what what it is or what's going on mm-hmm. and we want to see what's coming in because sometimes if we put out uh, a red Ford F-150 and then it, when you're looking for a red Ford F-150 there's about seven million of them right. in Amarillo and so we'll get inundated with those but if we just put you know a red pickup or you know just a pickup Though maybe we know it's the red F-150, or we can cull out some of those that aren't mm-hmm. aren't, aren't going to be a viable lead for right. us, and, and st- stick to the ones that are. Uh, I think that's what a lot of, especially now with, like I said, social media, the the media being 24 hours, and, and all of the law enforcement shows that are out now, people want to know, and then they they think, and, and honestly, they they think that they're entitled to know everything that happens, and, and it's not the case. So the 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 case comes first and that's the we have to be able to ha- hold up the integrity on that case and we're, we're all about transparency mm-hmm. we want we want to put it out we're going to put it out but the, the integrity of that case comes first for the for the victims for for everything on that so yes. and i think that's hard for a lot of people to understand yeah there's there's you know we try to protect those victims they've mm-hmm. already been whatever happened to them and it's a bad day for those guys and we just don't want it to be continually be a bad day and so, so when and this happens so much, you know, they'll they'll see something on Facebook or Twitter, and, and they're calling us, and it has nothing whatsoever to do with what our case is, and and it just it it takes my guy, it it sends us down rabbit holes, mm-hmm. and it takes up time that we don't need right. to be spending on when we need to be focused on what what we really know, what what the facts mm-hmm. are, and to go along with that, I mean obviously the victim protecting them is the most important but also the suspects I mean some of that information we don't give out because we don't want to wrongly accuse someone or um, falsely influence someone on a on on the part of a suspect because they're even if it does turn out they're guilty they're entitled to 
you know, of as fair a chance yes. to prove themselves yes. innocent as possible. Yes. And so if we, you know, minimize the information given out on them, then that helps our integrity with the case, their their chances on that, and to be able to say we did it as fairly and as as you know well as we can can be done. And, I, and I there's like. laws that go yeah. with that. You yeah. know, things that we can't put out if we know or have a good idea who the suspect is that we we don't we can't release a name yet. Mm -hmm. We can't do certain things because the law doesn't allow us to. And and I think I've I've had that talk with people, and I, most most people understand that. But sometimes you find some that just don't know and and that's something we talk about often is you know we we might put out the shooting is being investigated and we might not put out a suspect description because we have an idea of who it is and that's what we're looking for already we don't we don't need help we, we have an idea and we d can't put that name out there mm -hmm. because this is our suspect and we can't name them until an arrest been made or warrants been filed or something like that so that's yeah. something we run into often a really good example and that one is the the shooting we just had on canyon drive we had calls every day yes. about you know what are y'all doing on this one what are y'all doing on, and i know just because i talk to you all the time our detectives were working so so hard on that one yes yes we had a couple guys that they just really got after it busted i mean they really did they mm -hmm. got after it and, uh, and so far you know we've got a juvenile arrested mm -hmm. we've got a, a, an adult arrested and they've got a directed to apprehend on another juvenile mm -hmm. so right. uh, that's a and so that case has come along it's pretty yeah. solid yeah and and we had I mean there were there were a lot of questions it was hard you know people are like well we we want to know and and sometimes that translates to um, well what are you guys doing on that and so I, that was another reason why we wanted you on here because we want people to hear that you know and again, sometimes we can't tell you everything we're doing on it, but that doesn't mean that our detectives yeah. aren't working just their tails off. We can't tell you what you're, we're doing. It doesn't mean that they're just yeah, it's like a, drinking coffee or something. Like a, <laughs> they're, 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 those ten guys that I have, or nine and, or ten, or just depend on what it is, are, are hustling pretty hard every day. It's like a duck sitting on top of the water. Yes. They look totally chill, but their legs are going crazy <laughs> underneath. Well, and that's the other part of that is while they're working these cases, new cases are coming in. Yeah. And, and, the, and that's the other part. We get, we get that asked a lot mm -hmm. with so many different things as well. Why y'all have so many other things y'all could be working on. Why are y'all just doing this one thing? <laughs> and, and we have to explain, you know, we have detective divisions for every type of crime. You know, those detectives that work those crimes are always working those cases. While they're working those, they're getting new cases. But, you know, we can be having a, a DUI sting and still be working on shootings. And we can, yes. you know, it's, it's a lot of people have a misconception about when we're working on a, a specialized project that we're putting all of our effort towards that and not going and, and having our detectives still doing their regular jobs that are doing those jobs. Yes, yes. That, that weekend with the 5700 mm -hmm. Blanca Canyon shooting, guy that was on call was actually at another shooting yeah. over on West Haven and had been out on another shooting the night before and we called another guy you know a second detective to come in and him and a, and a third one one went to the hospital to take care of that in the other guy went to the, the scene to start taking care of that stuff and the next night we got the silliness down on 10th and Cleveland mm -hmm. or 10th yeah, and little boy. Grant with the little, little guy that got hit so uh, yeah so the, and then well they're still getting cases yeah you know, I've only, I got nine yeah. or ten guys depending on what what's going on and I think that weekend I had 58 so each of them got got five or six yeah. or seven cases yeah. you know so and and some of those they can you know they've got everything and they just have to put the paperwork together and send it over to the court but some of it takes yeah. Yeah, it all takes it reviewing and yes yes and, and the, they'll uh, look at our air all the troops uh, body cam video mm -hmm. and dash cam video and uh, they'll go out and look and see if you know there were some cameras um, from a tube totem or you know another business maybe that that caught part of somebody coming up to the shooting and then seeing them leave the shooting and uh, just just ton there's there's a lot to it mm -hmm. and so I think they're probably all still working on the other seven or eight they got that weekend right. yeah and they're getting one or two or three or four every day 
and then there's another weekend in there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so tell me about the um, the violent crime shooting response team. That's so, been something that has been since you've been in the, the lieutenant over. That started since you've been in there, I believe. Yeah. Uh, once when I took that over, uh, uh, Captain Bohannon and uh, uh, Chief wanted some kind of a response team to go out, and so normally. If, if there's a shooting and a uniform sergeant or, or you know an officer calls calls our phone the on call phone, then my detective whoever's up will go out, and well they've all been troops and they've all been a supervisor and they've been all been a detective for a long time and they can usually know real quick, uh, I just, you know no factor I can take care of this myself, but every once in a while and we've got you know a scene. At, one place and then a scene at another place and then a car somewhere and then the hospital and when that happens and we we just need guys we need people we got to be able to throw people out of problems so uh, what we did is uh, I just sent out an email and I just pulled a bunch of detectives and a bunch of uniformed guys and people in other units that wanted to be a part of, of that uh, we're just trying to keep it lean you know, only use them when we need them. We don't need them out there all the time. Uh, and I kind of tailor it to what's what the crime is. So, good example, uh, a couple years ago, we had a murder on 57th. Mm-hmm. Right, I called you yeah. out there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we had a, a murder over there. And so we kind of knew who the suspect was. We had a pretty good idea where everybody was. But we have uh, like 15 or 20 witnesses. We got a lot of people. So I'll probably holler more to the detective people to come out to take statements and affidavits or whatever it is we're doing because they deal with that all the time and they're going to know what what the homicide guys are going to need right. or what my guys are going to need. And uh, a couple years ago on New Year's Eve, we had a shooting and it ended up being a murder at up on Dumas Highway right right across from Winterland in that little oh, yeah. shop, the old yeah. Heimler mm-hmm. Shopping Center. And, and on that thing, well, we kind of had an idea of who the guy was but we had to find him and that's when I call my uniform people or some of those other specialized unit guys and gals and they can uh, go find him go uh, get him find you know sure. let us yeah so I don't need the detectives there I need I need I need go getters go yeah. find that people so right. that's kind of how we we run that thing and so it's one of those that it's been really successful and but it most Ninety percent of the time, my detectives are usually able to just take care of mm-hmm. themselves. But and it sure is nice to be able to call some people that want to come out and work and and help try to make a difference. Sure, in those big cases. Yeah, and it's I mean it's sometimes it can be overwhelming. I mean I don't know how many you guys had to have at the one on Canyon, but that was a huge mess. And they seemed to handle it with just a small group, but it was there was forty. There's 40 people. plus people yes. standing out there while I was there so I mean some of these can be really a lot of work and and uh, I know again a lot of people that call us and ask us questions it's it's questions because they don't they've never been on the law enforcement side they don't know and they only see what they see on TV or see what they see in the movies and so they're thinking it's supposed to be over in 45 minutes and it just obviously in the real life does not work like takes that a little so bit longer than yeah. <laughs> yeah. most times <laughs> exactly do you do you have a, a favorite experience at the police department oh gosh i have that <laughs> oh tell us uh, let me think off the top of my head so uh, i love being on when i was on patrol i was on SWAT for 10 years as, as an alternate and had some great training got to meet great people and do lots of good stuff um, are you still a, a firearms instructor yes okay yes, yes. and I still do that um, you know I enjoyed all my time in, in traffic uh, it was uh, pretty rewarding I, before I, I left there I counted up I think I had 252 fatalities man 10 years wow that i was i had a finger in it so that's an average of 25 25 25 a year year. yes that's 
that's sad. like people don't realize that yeah. we have more deaths every year in car accidents than anything else yeah and, and, and it's sad that that we have that and it's it's more sad that people don't understand that that's a big problem yeah. here in our city last year was like i think either our highest or our second highest record year of homicides and it was right about the same as what we have on traffic fatalities every year yep. yes, and people yes. don't and people were so focused on which it is we don't want that many homicides because we're already losing that many people to traffic fatalities yeah yeah yes and let's see i had some great experiences on this i love being out on patrol i enjoyed every second of it do you have a favorite shift you know, I love the evening shifts. That's, that's what I, I did, too. We're, this is an evening shift people right yes. here. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, it got to the point with my bride and, and the kids that I needed to be at home. Yeah. You know, because, you know, in your evenings and you're headed to work at 1 o'clock and you see them for, you know, a day or two, maybe on your day off if, if you don't have something else going. So, yeah, but it was fun. Mm. It was. Yeah. It was. I did. It started I, yeah. and all of a sudden it was like, time to eat yep. yeah oh it's time to go <laughs> yeah oh hang on there's a bar fight let's get in on that <laughs> yeah it was a blast yeah always something to do i loved it too i would i would go back i unlike you guys i don't have a spouse or kids at home but um i just kind of got used to my you know cushy schedule but yeah i wouldn't if you know if something happened and i was asked or told i need to go back i would ask for third shift absolutely it's fun it's a blast that and i i love day shift i love where i'm at but there was just something different mm-hmm. about evening shift it was just, it was just a different kind of fun mm-hmm. you know but i gosh i had a great time i worked with great people on my day times on the day sure. shift i i did i had a, I, I had a good time at work and then when i was on nights i i loved the work i loved that the, uh, the people i was with I hated hours. Yeah. Yeah. That was two years of being sick and tired, mm-hmm. and I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, 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 great, good crimes. You actually had some time to work with your guys, your younger officers, and teach them and mentor a little bit mm-hmm. and uh, uh, get after it. Get after the crooks, yep. you know, get after burglars and people that are out at night. Looked at no good. Yeah. Do you have a uh, like just a, a memorable, most memorable case? Something that just sticks with you more than anything else? Oh man, mm. well, there's a bunch. Uh, you know, I was I was on day shift, and this one sticks with me like crazy. So, and I I want to say it was around '99 or 2000, right around Y2K. Remember all that mm-hmm. craziness on that? Yeah. Episode? That's my and sophomore, junior year of high school. <laughs> so, so, uh, some, some lady, some, some, some crazy lady, like leaves the pavilion or she's maybe the fans. I don't remember how she, but she's at the pavilion and she steals an ambulance. Oh, God. I and remember that. She is going all over town and, and no matter what, we're just like literally a mile behind her. So she's at Western, we're at Bell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's at Georgia, we're at Western. And I was, I was uh, riding uh, B35 at the time. So, so back then, it's, I think they changed a little bit, but that was everything north of the tracks mm-hmm. and east of Grant. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, and I think this was a Sunday. I want to say it was like a Sunday afternoon or, or Saturday when this happens. And uh, I'm listening to all this stuff. And I'm thinking, eh, maybe she's going to come over this way. You know, so I'm, I'm <laughs> headed down eastern, south on eastern towards, towards the east side. And uh, as I'm going under the tracks, like, like right by Rio Grande, you, know, you got the tracks mm-hmm. that kind of go over the top. And this lady uh, is driving, driving crazy, because mm-hmm. she's, she's kind of crazy. And uh, she hits a minivan and killed a couple. Oh, of my gosh. And, uh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I remember. And I showed up, and she's running, running, like, you know, towards Sunrise School. So uh, I had to run her down. Man, her stuff. I, that one sticks in, and I don't even know why that sticks in, but I, it, it does. I can, that's that's I memorable. I can see that one just like, like you know. Yeah. Uh, anything. Uh, a couple others. Uh, where I got my nickname? I was gonna just <laughs> ask, can, can we get the story <laughs> behind that? So. Uh, 
Sometimes it's a story you can tell, and sometimes yeah, not. No, so I'm I glad you can, can tell, tell this one. <laughs> so uh, I'm trying to remember. I think I was on evening still, and uh, I was going to back up uh, my good friend, and he, he passed away, Don Mathis Haley. Okay, yeah. Don Haley, and he's I don't know, taking a report or, I don't know, burglary report or something like that because you know how's get broke in during the day oh, time, yeah. and i'm just coming on and i'm headed over there to medium and as i pull over on i believe it's seminole or woodland just just off the boulevard a little bit i see this guy take off from 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 don and don's a big old guy right? <laughs> you know and he can run for a big guy and i jump out and i'm literally 10 foot away from this this cat forever i chased him to seminole and woodland and 12th and 11th and jump fences and of course when it happens you know you could follow where i was because i lost my baton <laughs> i lost some cuffs <laughs> lost the radio uh, and uh, he, i finally caught this guy he's going over a fence and i was able to catch up to him get him and uh, uh some of the swat dudes were out rolling around that that i was you know worked with from time to time and, uh, and of course they came up and I had to like tag out, you know, let them take over because I was I was tired. <laughs> and then they started uh, just just talking some smack. Goes, you got run down by the cheetah. <laughs> so, so that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's funny. That's awesome. Uh, and so I uh, I can get you in about ten yards hey. or two miles. Yeah. yeah. If in between, go. I don't know. Just gonna just keep them in sight. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, That's awesome. I don't I don't have any good chasing down people stories. That was not my forte. So. You know. <laughs> My favorite chase story that I ever had was a car chase. And um, I had this lady that we had, we'd gotten a call. I got a call and she was suicidal and she'd left her house and she was on in the car and we were trying to locate her. And I catch her at third and uh, I think it was third and grand, th- Southeast third and grand. And I realize it's her about the time she turns on the third going eastbound and I turn on my lights and she took off and she took off going like immediately to a hundred miles an hour. And it was back when you could still chase people without, you know, them, we didn't have as many cars and there wasn't. And so they would let it go a little bit longer and we weren't as, you know, just there wasn't as much traffic and you didn't have to worry about as much, mm-hmm. but still a hundred miles an hour on third. I was kind of like, but I backed off, but I was still following her. Well, she goes out third as far as it'll go where it dead, dead ends into the I-40 access road, and then you come back. Yes, yes. And then is it Pullman it goes up yes. north yes. to the north end of the airport? And I'm like, okay, cool, I'm going to catch her. Well, it dead ends into a fence that takes you right out onto the airport, and that's what she did oh, was no. went right <laughs> through that fence. Yes. And so then I'm like, well, I don't. I mean, can I, I, can I, I go on the airport? Yeah. And so <laughs> Troy Roberson was working for Potter County at the time still. Yes. And he was behind me. And so he just zips around me and takes off. In, and I'm like, well, if he's going, I'm going. So I take off after him. And airport police is out there. And they tell us, you know, don't go out on the runway. So we're, like, going on the side part following. And she goes all the way down the runway. And, you know, those lights at the end that tell you the yes. runway's yes. ending. She goes through those and hits the dirt and then rolls the car like, I don't know, 17. I mean, I thought wow. there's no way she survives this. And the car lands on its roof and she's in there with her seatbelt just hanging there, just totally chilling. And um, we get her and take her to the hospital, of course. Cause she, and then the federal government came and got her and filed on her for a lot of federal <laughs> violations for going on to that. But I was just like, I mean, it was it was really kind of funny. And then when the the airport police in in Potter County were out there chasing her on the on the Get tarmac, much. I was just laughing because I was like, "This is like you know the one of those movies where it's like every it was pretty funny." So <laughs> yes. it was a good oh, man. one. We didn't. I didn't get in a lot of car chases, but that was probably my favorite because I was. I didn't. I just was blown away that she. Just kept on going right out there. Yes. So. Yeah. yeah, that chasing is fun, but it's dangerous. Oh, yeah. It is dangerous. Yeah. And it's even more so now. Yes. So, I mean, I know we still do it, but, yeah, we have to be so careful. And rightfully so. I mean, there's very few crimes out there that we can't, at this point now with the technology that we have, catch them later on and uh, worth taking someone's life, especially not for something minor like traffic, you know. So. Yes. yes. 
Well, I don't know. I think. What what else, Jeb? That's about all I've got. I really the the cheetah was all I was. I gonna, know. I, I've been dying I, I to know. I needed to know. So I figured it was some kind of running. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe some pouncing. Yeah. Uh, I think I think Doug Harrington is the one that was out there. So. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <Cop by that>. <laughs> <laughs> There's worse nicknames to have for yes, sure. Cheetahs are yes. cool animals. Yeah. They're graceful. They look cool. They're fast. I think they're the fastest. And, and we're the worst, most notorious group of people that will give you a nickname. <laughs> and it will stick. Yeah. And, you know, and hopeless. Uh, thank goodness mine was like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the I've, other one I've is the worse. Kansas Law Dog. Yes, but, I'm the Kansas Law yeah, Dog. I'm originally the, from Kansas. Yeah. He's Kansas. Share yeah. that with you. And Skeeters, you like, we call him Chris Shelton, also yes. Kansas Law Dog. Hmm. We all kind of have family and grew up all well they were up in us uh, in uh, northeast kansas and i was down southwest but all no people and hmm. family and everything the same so it was fun we used to have some fun yeah, conversations yes. about that when we worked together yeah, yeah. jerry newfield yeah a, yeah that's right doug that's harrington's right. Yeah. some of those old guys that we worked yeah. with for a long time <laughs> sometimes i like to um I, I don't feel that like an old guy, but then I forget I've I've been here almost thirty years, and um, well, everything feels to me like it happened last summer. I know. And then you're yeah. like, oh, yeah. Uh, we don't even drive those cars anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't even make them anymore. Yeah. And I'll I'll talk about like I'll talk about some of the guys that were that were here when we were young, and Corporal Hilton and Corporal Welling and the other guys in my unit. They look at me like who is that <laughs> i'm like oh yeah i've been here a little bit longer than you yes. but there's some good good times and then then someday they'll be telling stories to the rookies about cheetah and no, sergeant burn they're like who is that yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. although jeb says he's going to retire before then so i may be telling stories about him to oh, people if everything long. works out so. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to buy him a, a a house in Mexico if he can make it work. I'm just about three million short. So, yeah. So Sell uh, seashell, seashells <laughs> on the seashore. <laughs> something, something like okay. that. But the, the bad thing is I think there's some, some young guys here now that don't even know who we are. So oh, well, maybe. That's a <laughs> no, they know. They, they, well, I, fortunately, I get to go hang out with them in the academy. That's true. So I talk about you and Scott, so they have to know who you are. That's why they give us those looks when they walk past us. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I see. And then everybody knows the legend of the cheetah. So. That's true. Now. Uh, That's right. Hopefully. Yeah, now. Yeah. They, they, uh, uh, well, uh, but most of them, I, you know, would have been awesome to work with a lot of these newer mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. You know, uh, out in patrol doing some of that stuff. And I look at them and like their camaraderie and I remember ours and when we were doing that and I'm like, oh, that's, that's cool. That's the part I'm like, I'm glad, you know, it translates everywhere, but it's like, it's nice, nice to see that for them. I'm a little jealous sometimes cause I'm not part of that, yes. but yes. then I remember I had that with, with my, my people. So that's we, okay. We had a good squad back Oh then, yeah. You know. Yeah. We really did. It was a great squad. Well, is there anything else you want to share? Anything you can think of that we need to let the public know uh, the only thing i can think of off the top of my head is we are uh, we work hard for our victims we try hard to do the best we can for them uh, uh, I, i'm getting spun up on domestic violence and, and how those guys are working their cases and so uh, i'm really hopeful that my people in violent crime are going to be able to help those guys and right. those those DV people are going to help us. Maybe we can force multiply each mm -hmm. the, the strengths of each other because they do some stuff on on some of their case reviews and some of that that uh, I would like to see us do if we have you know big big thing that really needs needs done and how my guys are the way they're working some of their stuff and. and some of the processes they use on the violent crime thing uh, that could they could really benefit benefit mm -hmm. sure. to violence so well in so many of those crimes the only difference is in the domestic violence unit is that it involved family members like an aggravated assault is still an aggravated assault yes. the difference yes. is that this time instead of it being 
you know, drive-by shooting, it's a husband and a wife or a, you know, something like that. But the crime is still the crime. There's just the added, um, char- the added part of it being family violence. So the extra emotion that goes in with that. But yeah, a lot of that is exactly the same. And uh, a lot of our, a lot of my 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 suspects in one are the suspects in the other. Mm-hmm. Sure, you know. So when I worked um, DV, it was still all the same. We worked we worked DV. I worked for my primarily DV cases, but also worked, you know, whatever other cases I got assigned during the day, during the week. And I, I learned that early on was that, and I would tell some of the other guys, I'm like, if you can make a case on them for, for this theft, let me know. Cause I've got some DV charges against them and we can work together. And yes. yeah, I mean, they're, they, unfortunately it doesn't, you know, so yeah, yeah that's kind of the plan. I'm, I'm really, working to try to, uh, you know, I don't foresee us doing, you know, violent crime, doing DV cases Mm -hmm. or or vice versa, but uh, I really want to make it a team where where we can rely on each other, take care of each other with uh, uh, putting people in jail. They need to be held accountable for their actions. And hopefully when they get there, you know, maybe they'll get their life back together and uh, get get some other help maybe they need and uh, did not not do that silliness yeah thing. most importantly that they don't you know hurt anybody again that's the biggest thing with this is we want these suspects to get help but more importantly we don't want them to hurt anybody else yes. Sure. Yes. Well, thanks for coming on well, lieutenant you bet appreciate you thanks for having me yeah we always enjoy enjoy talking to you but it was fun all right thank you anytime <laughs>